So, round four, Poetic Justice. First up, we have Dave. So, here's the weird one. Chocolate gave us microwave ovens. Okay, and to prove this, in 1945, an engineer, uh, Percy Spencer, was working on a radar dish when he walked in front of it and it began to melt a chocolate bar that was in his pocket. Because of this, he realized that the microwaves that were being emitted from the radar dish were able to do uh, do that. So he started experimenting. Um, his first was with uh, some corn, which obviously popped and became popcorn. Um, and an egg which, well, that just exploded. Uh, the company he was working with, Raython, I, I don't think I'm saying that correctly, but yeah, two years later, um, they built the first microwave based on this event. They, they worked on what was going on and miniaturized it and made it as small and compact as possible, which was nearly six foot tall. <laughs> and when it went to the uh, uh, general populace, it costs $5,000. Basically the one from Kick-Ass, where they locked that guy in the thing, in the oh. microwave. Yeah. Oh yeah, that yeah. was nasty. And it, well, $5,000 in modern money, so if you wanted to go off and buy yourself a little microwave oven, is $53,000. That's what it would translate as, and that's what they decided selling for. I was going to say, you should have seen the price of ready meals. <laughs> it's a very expensive way to ruin food. Yeah. So yeah, chocolate, and maybe a scientist, but well, an engineer, gave us microwave ovens. Is there anything chocolate can't do? <laughs> How come he didn't cook though in front of the, when, when it melted the chocolate? Well, it would be, but it's obviously to do with like it was. His, it was doing. I was going to say yeah. It was, it, he was getting really tough on the outside and really undercooked on <laughs> the inside. That was essentially what was happening. <laughs> I guess if he stood there long enough, yeah, he'd have gone. Oh, South African. Yeah. <laughs> It's essentially what we are. Crikey. Cooked on the outside. What the fuck was that? South African accent. Crikey. That, that, that's not bad. That's, that's not bad. That was all right. I, I, I love accents. <laughs> I, I, I've tried to emulate tons. And I can just... I'm not going to do it right now because... Oh, you absolutely should. But German accents... So German accents is a lot higher in the back of the palate. And I always say it's a lot more organised and more precise. The Australian accent is a high inflection in the back of the throat. Everything's a fucking question. <laughs> and you sound fucking cheerful all the time, don't Precisely. you? Precisely. And to me, hearing people speak South African seems like a hybrid of the two languages, uh, accents. But as far as I can ever go is the fact that the word ten sounds like tin. And that's it. I, I'm out. That, that's my whole South African accent impression. <laughs> the, uh, I think you need to experiment with a bit of Dutch in there as well. Yeah, yeah. But, Dutch but, influence. There's, there's some like I, um, I, I know that's where it comes yeah, from. Yeah. But uh, like trying to master it is impossible. So I, I commend you. In, I'm not going to try because <laughs> I sound like a fucking idiot. Right, Jason, <laughs> you're up next. Hello. I found the whole poetic justice thing kind of difficult. So I just went with something that was vaguely topical, given this is being recorded two days before the uh, EU referendum. And in a time where we're deciding whether to uh, move away from each other or come together with each other, I decided to uh, find out that if we did all come together very, very closely, you could fit the entirety of the human race into the size of a sugar cube. Now, um, most people know structure of an atom, nucleus, empty space, Electrons flying around the outside, roughly. Um, around the outside. Around the outside. Just like trailer park girls. Yeah. <laughs> um, and atoms are 99.99 many nines percent empty space. A bit like a tiny solar system where the nucleus is the sun. Then you've got acres of nothing. And then the or electrons orbiting a bit like planets. Can I just uh, cut in here and, and, and uh, say that what holds them together is diamagnetism, which is what I was talking about earlier with my levitating frog. Anyway, continue. Marvellous, nice link. <laughs> um, but how does Jamie Oliver link to this? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Jamie Oliver is also made of atoms. I was going to say, the atoms used to be a lot bigger, but then they started eating healthily and not eating chips. There we go. And had a lot more space. 
That was kind of weak, if I'm honest. <laughs> I, I didn't have much to go with. <laughs> Clutching at straws. <laughs> so if you were to remove all the empty space from between the atoms, um, all seven billion inhabitants of the world, uh, the resulting actual matter, you could condense into the size of a sugar cube. Now, assuming the mass... Um, equals the estim estimated mass of the entire human race, your sugar cube would weigh approximately 287 million tonnes. Thank That's you. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, so basically, it'd be like like harder than a diamond, I take it. You know, that kind of density it, we were talking about. Oh, oh, super ridic dense. Ridiculous. I, I like, I'm that kind of weight. Mm -hmm. we're, we're talking something that's going to collapse in on itself. That... Uh, I guess, I, I, I guess, guess poop from Futurama. Go, go, yeah, pretty much. I mean, going back on my banana planet, uh, <laughs> banana planet. <laughs> going back on my banana, <laughs> it, it would generate insane heat and insane pressure because mm. you know we're, 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 what we're talking. Well, you say that the weight of uh, it's 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 the mass that creates the gravitational force, and two hundred eighty-seven million tons isn't an awful lot, but not. But you, you know you're right, but in a space of let's give it let's let's, let's say it's a generous cube, a centimeter squared, a cubed rather because it's a cube. Let's get my science right. Including the name, <laughs> precisely right. Surely that kind of density and gravitational pull would just collapse upon itself. Not heavy enough. No. No, not heavy enough. Because you get. Um, so, sorry, what credentials do you have to support that? A degree in astrophysics. Do you actually have yes, a degree in astrophysics? Yes, a degree in astrophysics. You saw a bit. <laughs> I don't believe you, Tom. You, you just totally called the bluff of someone. <laughs> I, I really don't believe. Do you really have a degree I in astrophysics? Really have, I do really have a degree in astrophysics. Okay, come over there. Now I'm going to test you. <laughs> Go for it. So, at what point. Uh, uh, right. Would it. Can I just say my degree in astrophysics was 13 years ago? Yeah, I'm give it time. Now, now, now give me the data that I requested. <laughs> now, within a date of 13 years. Yeah. I mean, it might have changed over time, but. I can't believe there's a degree in astrophysics. What the fuck are you trying I, to do? I with struggle that? to believe it's like that. What sometimes. are you doing here? Yeah, I know, right? I could be an actual QI. I was going to say, yeah, you actually worked for, for, for a company that we, we both know. Yes. What the heck did you do to end up in market research? Um, my life has been one big accident after the next. <laughs> no, Apart from uh, my marriage to my glorious wife, for the you, record. You, you could just re uh, remove the word my from that and be totally factually correct. Yeah. That is totally true. Life is an accident. Yeah. No one plans anything. No. <laughs> it's we fall from one accident into the next. Can I just tell us what you did want to do with it? Like, you know, everyone has a dream when they kind of go to university. Yeah, they use their uh, no, I never really knew, which is part of the problem, to be honest. I wanted to do it because it interested me. I'm not mocking you for it at all. No wonder you hate infinity. Yeah. yeah. It fucks with your physics. It does. <laughs> like, I'm studying computer science now, like, and I'm there in, in computer science, and hopefully next year, Results pending. Yeah, going to cybernetics and Ooh. yeah, mm. this is my area of geekdom, and I'm very impressed. I'm yeah, just don't kill us all. I can't, I mention, I can't promise. Should I mention your nickname <laughs> at this point or not? Yeah, far away. Yeah, yeah. Dave used to be known as Psycho Dave. Oh, good. He he has a T-shirt, I believe, that says "Ask me about my zombie plan." I I can't possibly see a problem with somebody being called Psycho Dave going into the area of cybernetics. <laughs> I look forward to Skynet. <laughs> oh, now, see, it, 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 the radio can't see it. His eyes have just gone wide and he's got himself all excited I have, about his I'm plans old. for world domination. Oh, the radio can see it. He designed it. <laughs> I can hear your eyes opening. No. Um, <laughs> that was really creepy. Yeah, uh, right. I'm, I'm Joseph I'm pretty good that. <laughs> What? Hold up. That was two episodes ago. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> One time I mentioned the fritzels. <laughs> that, that, that sounds tasty, though. Well, oh, fritzels. fritzels. I know what you mean. Like, I always think this whenever I hear his name. <sighs> Probably shouldn't design a snack called the fritzel, though. <laughs> There's always more around the bottom than you think. <laughs> <laughs> Don't share them. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
I don't even care or know what I was talking about before. <laughs> <laughs> right, we went from degrees. Hang on, we were on degrees. We were talking about sugar, sugar cube people, then we went to degrees. Yes. Um, uh, that, that was it. It was it you were way. Call, you were calling me out on what, on, what, on what point do I know that uh, matter will implode into a singularity or not a singularity? Uh, don't know. Can't remember. Long time ago. But, so, yeah. Something to do with the Schwarzschild radius. I remember that. I'm going to go with impressed and yeah, just let you have it. That 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 shit could be due it's down yeah. to something that controls snow clouds. Something to be something to do with black holes. Promise. <laughs> he, he said something complicated. I'm willing to back down. <laughs> yep, fair enough. <laughs> cool. Um, right. Okay. So moving on, uh, we've got my one, which is to do with the one time two pigeons didn't shit on something. Which is the one time two pigeons didn't shit on something, they were shot for it. Um, so this relates to good old Big Bang Theory, because I was desperate to shoehorn the Big Bang Theory in here somehow. I, I kept looking up for facts for the TV show and all that kind of thing, all the boring stuff that everyone knows, you know, like the one of the things actually has a degree in neuroscience and think various different things like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, I ended up finding thing, facts about the actual Big Bang Theory, and that's that um, Robin Wilson and Arno Penzias, excuse the pronunciation, um, they were using large horn antennas at the Bell Labs in New Jersey to gaze into space. Um, so this is before the discovery of, of like any kind of evidence for the Big Bang Theory. Um, when they first started, they received readings of higher temperatures than they were expecting, uh, which they initially assumed was pigeon poo on the instruments. So they got a bird catcher in and sh uh, shipped off the two resident pigeons to a local bird man. Uh, the, the term is pigeon fancier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> creepy in itself. And of course, Having put all this effort to catching the pigeons and sending them to this man, he then released them because he wasn't a cruel man, I suppose. You know, I, I you not, know, he not released the, the pigeons. Not that pigeons have insane homing ability. Yeah, I was going to say, it, it's not like there was any kind of precedent with them travelling to places but uh, that they've been before. But yeah, anyway, so these pigeons returned and it was basically the next day. They, they shipped them off, they released them, they were back. And the temperatures uh, kept being at an unexpected level, so they shot the pigeons. <laughs> and it turned out that they hadn't been shitting on the instruments, and that in fact that they had discovered evidence of the Big Bang theory, which was I think it was basically residual plasma or something out in space that you know in a place they weren't expecting it to be, and it was um, residue from the Big Bang. And yeah, so they shot two pigeons, and the death of those two pigeons allowed them to draw the conclusion that uh, about this thin, this theory. And it was one of those theories that was kind of eventually drawn. It, it wasn't, like, discovered all at once. They they had to put a lot of work and thought into it. Yeah. Two dead pigeons. Big bang. Two big bangs. Two big bangs, yeah. Two big bangs. <laughs> but bumps. Uh, no, <laughs> that was them falling off the... No. Uh, and bouncing off the relay. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. Tasty, though, pigeons. Delicious Pans. pigeons. Mm. So, for round four's poetic justice, are we going with uh, Dave's melted pocket chocolate accident, Jason's sugar cube people, or my sacrificial pigeons? Jason, who are you going with? Because chocolate's delicious. Chocolate, please, thanks. Fantastic. And I... Although pigeons are delicious as well. Pigeons mm. are delicious. Mm. Hard to catch. Yeah, chocolate's easy to catch. Chocolate. Thank you. I, I was going to fight for that point. <laughs> Uh, cool. I am going to go with sugar cube people. I like how you you knew that fact, despite the fact you looked it up on on one of the first are, are you... facty websites. I, I like the fact that you actually knew it inside and out. So I'm going to go with sugar cubes. Are you implying that I just got all my facts off the first few Google links I found? Oh, if you heard last week, if you heard last week, oh, I got ripped for that. <laughs> It's not I'm studying though, ancient so. Greece since I was six, but no, apparently me reading Google is an issue. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so, uh, Dave, who are you going with? I've heard the uh, the pigeon story in a different way, so I'm a little bit confuddled. But the winning factor is that I also stumbled across the same web page, and I loved the idea of sugar cube people, and it would have been mine. So... 
Sugar cubes wins it for me. I was going to say the interesting thing because uh, Kathleen was going to be here this week, but she's unfortunately sick. Um, and she also found the same fact as well. <laughs> so I had to tell two people that they couldn't use this particular fact. So the key to this is get your fact sheets in early. Yep, exactly. Mm-hmm.